Welcome back to the Herb Business Podcast. This is episode seven. I'm your host, JB. Got CP with me. What's no up, cow. dude? We What's up, dude? You been chilling? You been chilling? Yeah, man, I've been doing as good as I can do. 2020 is a bitch. Too. Man, I'm telling you, it's, it's taking away all our icons. John Thompson passing. Not to mention Chadwick Boseman, man. He was a... He was a big time boxing fan. You see him at all the boxing events, you know. Mm-hmm. He was just a, a a great entertainer, you know, a, a true mm-hmm. warrior. And you could see it in his film. I mean, the guy filmed seven movies after mm-hmm. he was diagnosed with colon cancer. I know, man. Like he, he persevered through it all, man, and bought bought us films such as Marshall. The Five Bloods, Black Panther, and August Wilson's My Rainey's Black Bottom, which is scheduled for release later on in 2020. And several Mm. more, all filmed during and between countless surgeries and chemotherapy, man. He was a true warrior, the definition of Black power. I know, man. And then what's so crazy about it is, is, is like, not just him, but... I thought back to Kobe, right? Bruh, them boys didn't, didn't even didn't even get a chance to see 45. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's it's crazy, man, how 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 like how fast life is, you dig what I'm saying? And how quick we take shit for granted, bro. Like for real, for real, bro. Oh, but yeah. with Chadwick Boseman, I seen him at a couple of events or whatever. I just never took a picture with him. I didn't really, I couldn't really get too close to him or whatever, but man, some of the movies he played in while he was going through all of that, man. Secretly, bro. Jackie, Secretly. Jackie Robinson. The James Brown documentary, bro. He he did that before, but that was just, you know what I'm saying? He had a heck of a, a, a filmography. And, and you so, know what I ain't like? You know what I ain't like too? A lot of people need to be a little bit more um, sensitive to what other people go through, even if they even if they look like they're going through something, but you don't know they're going through something, bro. I think the internet needs to get to have a little bit more chill with that. Hey, because when he, you know, you're absolutely right, man. When he was losing that weight and people was was clowning on him, but I'm gonna tell you something. I'm guilty because I'm watching LeBron James in the bubble. Yeah, and I'm looking at the. Loss of hair. when LeBron is in the bubble and he's not able to have his hair manicurist with him, yeah, you can really see that he needs to come on home, you know. And and, and yeah. it's not such a bad thing. Look, I'm ball, so it's not like I'm just picking on the guy. Just do it. It's yeah, time it. to shave it off, Bron. Channel your inner Michael Jordan. Channel your inner MJ, bro. Yeah, bro. Cause think about it though, man. I mean, shit. I mean, he losing it rapidly, bro. I mean, I thought my shit was bad. Lord have mercy, man. Your boy looking like he, he looking kind of raggedy out there, bro. Is on a landslide, a hair Ooh. landslide. He's like uh Daniel LaRusso trying to plant the bonsai. Oh man, no. Karate, karate. Kid, come on, man. Come on, man. Right. Hey man. The guy needs to just come on home. Come on home, LeBron. Hey, Man, put a raise in that it. thing. It'll be a lot easier. Your life will be a lot easier. You can just yeah. get up and go. Yeah, people are leaving him alone, definitely. People are definitely leaving him alone. What else do you have to say about LeBron? Nothing. Besides, he needs to cut off that hair. Cut off the rest of the hair he got, me. You know, Trust me, honey. He got the James Evans going on. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Oh, one more thing. Before yeah. we get into it, right? Mm-hmm. I know you noticed my hat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make races. Make races catch hands again. Yeah, say that one more time. One more time. Make races catch hands again. Yeah. So just letting y'all know, man, this is not a MAGA hat. I know it looked like it, but it's there to fool MAGA supporters. To it's embrace real easy, And it's real easy to fool those guys. Yeah, because all I want them to do is embrace me. Mm. And once they get close enough and see the hat, it's going to kick in. The statement is going to really be what it means. Oh, it don't you take much what I'm saying. 
they they voting for a guy who's a bumbling idiot. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to throw that out there, just in case y'all got a double take and y'all got to see. Yeah, just letting y'all know, man. Uh huh. Hey, look, JB. So we're moving on from that. Let's get into boxing news. Ramirez Posto. We talked mm-hmm. about it. We hyped it up last episode. Mm-hmm. And it lived up to the billing. Mm-hmm. It was a close, it was a nip and tuck fight. Let me get your thoughts on it. Uh, be quite honest with you. Posto, he, he fought the fight that I thought he was going to fight. Long, rangy, trying to stay out the way. Uh, but I knew I knew Ramirez was gonna come in there and, and try to bulldog him. But that's just kind of, that's how he fight, you know. I mean, he he got some skills, but that's just his nature that's or whatever. Oh. Yeah. So I, I think I, if you want want me to be honest with you about it, I was in total agreement with Tim Bradley. That and I and I'm one of them guys that I don't really care about what Tim Bradley got to say on the commentating side. He's a he 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 good. He was good at what he did. He's, but look. But uh, Tim Bradley is an annoying character. Too Lord, I can't watch him. I mean, he's knowledgeable. He knows what he's talking about. He's a, he was a, a solid fighter, a good fighter, probably a Hall of Fame fighter. But he, to me, man, they've got to find somebody else. You know what? That would be a great landing spot for Paulie Malinati. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So going back to the performances of for both fighters, post all, I think he did a good job. I think he pulled it out. I think he pulled out the fight. I think he earned that. I think the um, he didn't get the benefit of the doubt of really putting on a jab, putting on a show. Some of the, I think some of the the uh, fight stats he had, he was leading. Um, he gave away the first few rounds. I just say that he gave away the few first few rounds, and I think that's what haunted him going toward into the that, later rounds. That and the fact that Ramirez is naturally an aggressive fighter. Yeah, the aggressor got the benefit of the doubt here in a close fight. I don't think yeah. it was a robbery. I think that Ramirez is, you know what I'm saying? He did what yeah. he had to do. It was a good fight. And, and yeah, it was a good fight. People need to place more credence on the victory Terrence Crawford has over Victor Paul Stowe at this yeah. point. You know, I hear a lot of them, they question his resume at 140, and they don't even mention Paul Stowe. Yeah. People forget. Victor Postol is the reason Danny Garcia moved up to 147. Mm. He is a mm. problem. The man is no slouch. So it's not a black eye on Ramirez to have an iffy performance against him. The only thing I will say is that Josh Taylor stated that he wasn't impressed by Ramirez and he has every right to say that because he mm-hmm. has been in the ring with Ramirez, with, with Posto. Mm-hmm. And he handled him in a much easier fashion than uh, Ramirez did. What you got to yeah. say about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... Actually, what he said was, he said, outstanding performance from Posto. He said, Ramirez, mm, not so much. See, but you know what? You know what, JB? Mm -hmm. Take that with a grain of salt. He's bigging himself up in that statement because he's already beat Posto. So he's trying to say Posto was the better fighter. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And he also had a little war words with Andre Ward, too. Um, Andre Ward was making reference to him. I think on air, he was saying something about, Josh Taylor can't fight any in inside. And, uh, you know, it got back to Josh Taylor. He didn't really take that shit well. You know what I mean? And he, was, yeah. he tweeted out, he said, P.S. Andre Ward don't know shit. You know, laughing emoji. And, you know, Andre Ward, he kind of responded to, I'm not sure. He said on Twitter, he was like, uh, I'm not your opponent. I'm not your opponent, champ. Stay focused on what you, got ha- what you have coming in front of you. So I think Josh Taylor... He's a good fighter. I mean, he beat he beat Rougarou, right? You know, he did what he was supposed to do. I just think, for me, he need to come off that high horse, too, a little bit. I mean, don't get it twisted, bro. You still have a little bit more to prove, you know? Yeah. Don't he, think but, that... But he's riding, he's riding that big win of Regis Progray. Rougarou. Yeah. 
and, and, and yeah. that is a that is a big win. Now I'm gonna ask you: Is Josh Taylor's win over Regis Progray a bigger win than Ramirez's win over Maurice Hooker? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because at the time Regis was knocking people out, he was beating people up, he was doing a lot more than what I think Hooker was doing at that time. So I think, and and I think the caliber of people too that Ruger was Ruger Ruger was beating up at that time. I think Josh Taylor, yeah, you can give him the credit. You can give him the edge, right? You can give you can give his win over Ruger Ruger the edge over Ramirez's win over Hooker, but I still say. That Josh Shelley come up that high horse a little bit too, and, and realize, man, that you still building yourself up too. You know, you, you know, just can't be sitting back thinking that you the king and you can observe and pick and choose and whatever else. No, you can't do but that. But I bro, think what he's doing is just positioning himself <clears throat> as the alpha dog and yeah. making it to where he would be the high paid man in that fight. You know, everybody. Nowadays, it's all about A side and B side. Who's getting paid the more money? So he's trying to position himself in that slot. So Damn. I can't much blame him for his rhetoric following a Ramirez performance that wasn't impressive. You know what I'm saying? It was, mm -hmm. he got by a tough opponent. And as I said last episode, the other episode, about Sean Porter, it could have been worse. True. True. You know, hey, you always take the W. You, yeah. You cannot underestimate the power of a of a win over a solid opponent. Now, this was a a more threatening opponent than Sean Porter faced. True. This is the guy who was the boogeyman at the weight division at one time. So, you know, and and we all know boxing is about matchups. It's a, it's, it's a style matchup. Yeah. And if, ask me, I don't doubt Andre Ward's knowledge of the sport. Mm -hmm. Ramirez is an inside fighter, and he would give Josh Taylor some props. He'd give him everything he's looking for. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe that. I think. I think Ramirez again, again, everything you're looking for, and especially in that inside. So I'm not. So what, what? What Dre was really saying, he was he was making a good point that Josh don't he don't necessarily need to be. He don't. He haven't showed that he can really get in there and bang, bang, bang. You feel what I'm saying? Like he didn't yeah. do all that. So, but I've seen him fight in the inside before. But that don't mean that just because you fought in the inside before don't make it that don't. That don't mean that you that you can that you do a good job at it. Yeah, you understand. You're not necessarily an expert at it. Yeah, because you've done it. You yeah, just exactly. Got it. And especially you got to take into account the caliber of opponents that you did against. Exactly. So, you know, everything is 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 semantics. It's debatable, but we got to see them in the ring. But if you ask me, I take Ramirez in that. But oh yeah, oh yeah. I moving definitely on. Would. We got Baranchik and Zapata October 3rd in the WBC Eliminator. Yeah, they say and they saying also that the winner of that fight is gonna get gonna be the mandatory for Ramirez um for the WBC title. But I don't know how that's gonna work out, man, because um the WBO mandated that Jack Caterall is 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 a uh, you know, he the mandatory for that, for that strap. It seemed like to me, Ramirez is going to be busy. Um, I just don't know how the whole landscape at the weight class is going to play out, but I'm hoping they kind of get it together and we just see, I want to see a, um, I want to see Ramirez go straight to Josh Taylor. Just forget about all the mandatories, forget about the people up next, just get that out of the way, then look, come back to that. But Look, I definitely don't want to see Ramirez against Caterall, even though the guy's 25 and up. Yeah, exactly. Only got 13 knockouts against some questionable opposition that he has exactly. not fought the best fighters at the division, Any, or even like a step-up fight. 
Yeah, exactly, man. So, I mean, that just lets you know he don't have no pop. Yeah. I mean, now if we had to see anything, I take him. I take him against the Baranchik Zapata winner. Now, yeah. yeah, how that fight is really an interesting fight. Mm. Zapata, he would have the power advantage over Baranchik. Mm-hmm. He's got a seventy-eight percent knockout ratio. But hmm. Zapata's knocked out some guys too, but hmm. not at as high a rate. Zapata's the older guy. Baranchik has the age advantage. He's got the youth on his side. Mm. But there's a three inch reach advantage with Zapata. So if when you add the reach and the power into it and the southpaw stance of Zapata, mm-hmm. you got a guy. Who can pose some problems? He, if he can beat Baranchik, he can pose some problems for Ramirez. Mm, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, the only thing that worries me is the the power and the knockout percentage of Baranchik. You know what I'm saying? What he had? Uh, he at sixty five percent. Yeah. Right now, I think I think he would have to jump on Zapata being a old, you know, being a younger man. A lot harder. I think that probably gave him a little bit of... You have to push that might the pace. Be, yeah, he got to push the pace on him. But other than that, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. I just don't want to see him fight. I don't want the WBO to kind of ruin the unification or anything like that, Don. I don't want to see all that. But this fight, at, at the WBC eliminator, it is a crossroads fight for those guys. Mm. Ranch, you mm. get 20 and 1. Zapata at 31 and 2. It's two guys. The winner would take a huge step forward. The loser would get a, a big setback. So it, it's it's a crucial fight at the weight division. And it's one for, for the people to watch. Okay. Okay, I feel you on that. Man, uh-huh. it sounds like to me, man, it's a lot going on in the lightweight division, to be real. There's a lot going on. You got a lot of activity, a lot of movement. And the I think it's well to weight division. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna be, I think it's uh I think it's shaping up to be pretty cool. I think um at the end of the day, we wanted boxing back. We wanted some activity. We wanted some meat. Hey, but the, we, here's, here's we, the got, thing. we got what we asking for. Yeah, but now, we need now we need Saturday meaningful. Night. We need meaningful fights. Oh, it's coming. It's no doubt about it. I, hey, the Loma Lopez fight is very meaningful. And oh, yeah, for sure. It's, so it's coming. But now for sure. Laura Vendetta. Mm. I told you that too, right? I feel like I feel like Laura did what he was supposed to do. Vendetti showed up, he did his job, but I just I told you, man, Vendetti was gonna be there to pose enough resistance for us to assess Laura and say, okay, well, can he really take on the winner of Charlo or Rosario? Because that's what he wants next. You understand? Can he really, you know, can he put up with can do can he really keep up with the pace? Did he can do it? Did he do the job for you? Oh man, no, no. And I'm not gonna lie to you. He he's always been a slick fighter. He's always been a crafty fighter. I give him that. He has been, but I'm gonna tell you what. One thing yeah. about Saturday night, he was sloppy. Yes, yes. But he's but he's always able to rely on his IQ to get him out of certain situations to make it look pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. And I think. Vendetta, he did what he was supposed to do. He showed up. He showed he gave enough resistance for us to see if Laura still got it or whatever. His Laura legs look kind of shot. He looked like he can't get off that left hand like he normally do. He popped him a few times with it, but, you know, getting it off a few times don't necessarily mean you can keep Charlo off of you with it or Rosario with you off of you with it. So, oh, overall, I, I, gave, I gave him a 6 out of 10 for this performance, even though he won. I, I that's taken in consideration what kind of fighter he fought and how he looked overall and I, and what he's going to look like up to what he want what he's hey. going to look like up to the next people that he want to fight. JB, after a fight like that, man, you got to just take your win and go home. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, bro. You do not need to be calling out Charlo or Rosario. Yep. We already stated coming in, he's 37 years old. We knew that he's a Cuban fighter 
and that the 37 could possibly be 40. It looked more like 45. Not mm-hmm. gonna lie. Yeah. Because Zapata, if you're fighting a 37 year old Iris Landed Laura, he getting boxed, he's boxing circles around. Yeah. And we didn't see that on Saturday night. We saw mm-hmm. a Laura that looked faded. Yeah, he, he did was just, he he was he, he's a dominant enough fighter. He, he he was so skilled in his younger age to where even now he can still beat a guy like Zapata, but he's yeah. not up for the task of these young, of the Lions only. Charlo, nah. and nah. I think Charlo was gonna beat Rosario because Charlo has got that. He got it, bro. He yeah, got, he got it. it. He 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 has the hunger. He he won't even back down to his own brother. Yeah. So you know that it's gonna be a fight whenever you step in the ring with that guy. Exactly. exactly. And I don't think I think Arizona Landy Laura right now is wishing he was still with uh Ronnie Shield so he could have that. That that to, to 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 fall back on and say, hey, you can't fight. I'm not gonna fight nobody in my camp. You know this, that, and third. But now he don't got that. Yeah, and uh, it's gonna be ugly. I know, right? All right? JB, let me correct that. He wishes Charlo had never left Ronnie Shield, and they could say he's with the same camp. Yeah, because Charlo went to Derrick James' camp. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, man, I looked at, I seen a a real exciting heavyweight, bro. And it's hard for me to look at the heavyweight division and see some excitement up there, you know, since Wilder obviously got exposed um, for his lack of fundamentals. Wait, 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 wait. Walk that back. Can't. I can't walk it back. No, listen. Wilder did not get exposed. He's been exposed. Everyone knew Wilder was just a pop. Wilder says, hey, everybody's got to be perfect for such and such minutes. I only got to be perfect for two or three seconds. He, yep. he already told you he's not a technical boxer. He's not a skilled boxer. He's just mm-hmm. got power. So yeah. he didn't get exposed. He just ran up against a guy. Who can who's gonna fight it? Who's gonna fight him back too? And can take a punch. Yeah. So Daniel Dubois, the boy stopped his opponent, uh Snodgers, in the second round over the weekend. This little guy, man, he uh he one of the he he a he a pretty good heavyweight, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Look, he he a, he a pretty I'm, good I'm heavyweight. You, now, do you see some skills in him? Because if you're looking at who he's fought. He's only had 15 fights. Now, he's got a 93% KO percentage ratio. Mm -hmm. But he's knocking out... He's knocking out Wilder-like opponents. True. But look, all that's about to change. Because uh, Frank Warren just announced that him and Joe Joyce, the silver medal medal winner in the Olympics, he... Signed the fight on October 24th. So, with that being said, this is going to be a pretty good test for him, right? Because right now, it seemed like to me, he jumping way up in competition from what he used to fight to fight somebody like Joe Joyce. You know what I'm saying? That that really have a good pedigree to, to be a, a good fighter. He's Even though good, wait, wait, Joe Joyce has got a good amateur pedigree, but what has yeah. Joe Joyce done in the professional ring? Man, I mean, he I think he he been making of some noise, you know. I'm just gonna say that. I'm not yeah, gonna shit on him. Tit for tat. That's a good fight for him. Yeah. You know, if 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 that's the case, even who he wants to who he's been caught, who he wants is is Dylan White. That's a guy who a guy with some power, that's who you want to face. You want to face a name like that mm-hmm. who's already been knocked out and you could get some strikes. That would yeah. be a good move for a guy, in my opinion, at 22 years of age, 
it's no need to rush him now. You don't want to rush him up against a Joshua type or anybody like that. But a Dylan I mean, fight would be a good fight for him. Yeah, it'll be a good fight after this fight. It'll be a good fight. I think um he get past Joe Joyce moving into the ranks of like Dillian or uh, Dillian White, Tresaro, you know, different people like that. I think it'll be good for him. But I know they already matching, trying to match up him and AJ somewhere down the road. It may not be immediately. I'm sure it's not immediately, but they're already saying that if he stay on the on the on the um the route that he on, that he definitely gonna be he gonna see AJ a lot quicker than what people think. Okay. So yeah, and, and that's an easy, you know, two overseas fighters. That's 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 a makeable fight. Yeah, it's a makeable it's a fight. marketable fight. Yes, yes. And uh, speaking of Dylan White, um. <laughs> I mean, to be real and, and to be fair, you know, people, he's been looking for a lot of sympathy, man. Um, Andrew Reed said some shit. He was like, yo, you talk all this shit, disrespect your opponents at the weigh-ins, post stupid memes, and now we got to feel sorry for you because you got KO'd. Get the fuck out of here. So, like, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that, and then I'm looking at the little spat. I agree with Andy. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I'm looking at the little spat <laughs> that Dillian White and Frank Warren, the promoter out there, has something to say. Uh, <laughs> Frank Warren said this. He said, Dillian, I'm more than good, thanks. It's on record I was defrauded millions in the early 2000s. A lot has happened in the last 20 years, and I'm more than fine. Now that that's cleared up, can you please care whether your B sample testing differently than your A sample testing? <laughs> No, what what did I say last episode? Yeah, you said that, that shit. Was, hey, those guys, hey, they that that that, that piss test had to come hotter than piss Woo, bro. It's oh, hot. But look, no. but look, you can't no. he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. He got knocked out. Like and he got knocked out. How, yeah, he got knocked I can't out. I, and I cannot feel sorry for a guy. Yeah. He talks as much trash as Dillian White does and thinks as highly of himself as Dillian White does. And yeah. then he steps in the ring, gets knocked out by Pavekin, who he was supposed to be. Yeah, he was supposed to whoop that. But I knew he couldn't beat him. Yeah. But you know I knew he couldn't beat him. He was supposed to beat him. It was the, I thought, I thought, I thought, I really thought that, you know, Pavekin was gonna get was gonna get smoked. But no, no way. Nah. If anybody, if Dylan White, that's why I say this is a good fight for the kid. Uh, Daniel Dubois? Yeah, Daniel Dubois is a good fight for him. He's got power. Anybody with some power. Dylan White is a front runner. He's he's the Zab Judah of the heavyweight division. No, no disrespect to Zab Judah, but Zab Judah gets off the fast starts. He's great technically. He's a good boxer. Boom, boom, boom. As long as he's fresh, he's good. If when Dillian with fatigue sets in, he's gonna give you a shot. And yeah, if that power, your shot is gonna be affected. Yeah. So and um, nah, I feel you, I feel you on that. But let me. Yeah. But going back to going back to what was started the little spat and started that and warranted that response from Frank Warren. Dillian Whitehead said something. He said. I may be on my ass for a few seconds, but Frank Warren, you've been on your ass for years now. So that just they going back and forth. But to be real, it's right. It is it's it's more more than right just to say, you know, he got busted before. Povekin got busted before. So I'm sure that that piss test is hotter than the gun that killed Kennedy. Yeah. Oh, you did? it's smoking. smoking. It is smoking. I know it's smoking. But uh, uh Got to talk about, since we're on the heavyweight division, Fury wants Wilder in 2020. More notably and more specifically, he won him on the 19th of December. That's the date he laid out. He won him or he won Joshua. But he said he's not waiting on him, though. Let's this time for sure. So, 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 so let's get this out the way. I'm going to be sympathetic to Deontay Wilder's plight. All right? Mm -hmm. I can see his side of things here. Deontay Wilder wants to maximize the amount of income he can get 
for a third fight with Tyson Fury, and he cannot do that if there are no fans in attendance. So he does not want to commit, sign a contract to a fight where there may or may not be fans. Yeah. So the odds of him fighting Tyson Fury on that day are slim. Yeah. Now, so Tyson Fury is going to have to have an opponent in the meantime. Who that's going to be, we don't know. Joshua, he he might be obligated to fight someone else. Well, uh, right now, uh, he's obligated to fight Usyk for one of the sanctioned bodies. And he won a unification fight with Fury. And he has a mandatory in Pulif coming up. So, I mean, he got work to do. I, don't get it twisted. AJ is busy. He got work. You know what I'm saying? Fury Because is, he does have two of the three. Yeah. Major. So. Yeah. He got work right now. Prize. He's the prize here. Even though he's got the loss, he is the, the guy that makes this whole thing turn. Now. Fury is the bigger fight. So I'm sure if a deal can't be done for Fury Wilder, that Fury and Joshua will get to the table because they've already kind of agreed to fight. But they've agreed in 2021. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, but like, but but I'm, I'm but but what I'm saying is this. I do not fault. Deontay Wilder because he kind of knows that this is a this is a money grab. Yeah, it is. Because he cannot, he, he he doesn't have like his only shot is those that split second if Fury's not paying attention and he can catch him with the right hand. Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, it's open and closed when it comes down to what he can do to Fury. So and and his strength going into the fight, that's for sure, and and. I kind of fought him a little bit, man, because I feel like I'm blaming a lot of fighters about this bullshit right now, bro. I would blame but, him more if he hadn't already fought the guy twice. No, I'm not talking about I'm not I'm not even nearing close to calling him a coward saying that he's scared to fight him and all this other shit. I'm not doing that. What I'm saying is, is that I'm tired of I'm going to blame a bunch of fighters for this shit, too. I'm tired of fighters acting like the economy of the fight game has not been affected. You understand what I'm saying? Well, like, no, I'm no, tired no, no, of- no, 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 Listen, Wild is not disputing that fact. He's acknowledging that fact, but he's saying that he's willing to wait it out until the fans are able to come and the economy can be replenished. You feel yeah, me? But, yeah, but that's the, that's, the, that's the whole thing about this that's the whole the whole that's the problem with this fight shit right now, man. Fighters don't understand that it is no timetable of when this shit is about to happen. So are you willing to stay on the table, on the shelf? I, I'll tell you this. If I was Deontay Wilder, I'd be willing to say, hey, Fury, go ahead. Fight mm-hmm. Joshua. Now, whoever wins. Fury or Joshua, I'll be here. Mm -hmm. And when the fans are able to come back, I'll fight any one of you. And I can lose to either one of you, but I'm going to get my paper. And I can respect that. Because the guy has all... We know Deontay Wilder is a rock'em, stock'em robot. He is not even a robot. He's a leaping, punching power machine. I mean, the guy will punch you. He will punch you and both his feet will be off the ground. He's nothing technical about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can... Fury can see him coming from a mile away, but he might can catch Josh. I mean, I'm going to go on the limb and say this, man. Yeah. Go ahead and stay on the shelf, Wilder, because I know for a fact both these boys is going to smoke your turkey. Wilder doesn't have to stay on the shelf, though. I mean, he what fight, is he, he going to do? He can, he can fight some 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 uh, menial opponent, opponents in the meantime. 
you know? Yeah. Everybody loves a good knockout. True. So, you yeah, right. This has been my thing from the beginning. See, this has been my thing with Wilder. I don't understand why they've been scared to step him up because a loss doesn't hurt Deontay Wilder. He's he's like Mike Tyson. He, yeah. He's always an attraction. You yeah. don't know. He's a knockout threat every time he steps in the ring. He's he's like a lightning rod. So yeah. his drawing power doesn't diminish by a, lo- a, a loss, especially a, a loss like he got against Fury. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So anytime he steps in the ring, who no matter who it's against, he can fight anybody. We love to see devastating knockouts. And that's what he provides. You're right. Moving on to Delahoya news. Delahoya hey. said that he what's up. It's been too much goddamn Delahoya news and not the promoting kind, man. This is bothering me. I know, right? But go ahead. Man, the boy, well, it's kind of promoting a little bit because he basically said something about Canelo will come back and fix the poor ratings in boxing. I think he's putting right. on, yeah, but I think also, I think also, man, he, Canelo got to come back and fight somebody worthy of fucking people, people want to see. But have the ratings been poor? Not to my knowledge, man. From what I'm seeing is I heard that uh, Porter and them did a meal uh, average viewership, so I, I don't know. I, I'm I haven't that's really. I'm not. Pure, a, that's pure promotion. It's Oscar yeah. De La Hoya at his finest. It is why I don't understand people who don't want to sign with Golden Boy. The guy will promote you. He will. He's gonna ride for you if you're with him and if you're willing to fight. But I don't agree with him. I mean, I agree with him, even though I don't agree that the. Uh, Ratings have been poor, but I mm-hmm. agree that Canelo will improve ratings anytime mm-hmm. Canelo Alvarez steps in the ring. It's an event. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, you're right about that. Unlike, <clears throat> unlike Chavez Jr., uh, he got a fight coming up on the 25th of September. He fighting against uh Cazares. They they arguing about the weight right now. Nobody really knows what's going on with it. They just announced the fight, but they bickering. They camps is bickering because they don't know what weight is gonna be. They haven't yeah. even said. They haven't so, even speculated about what what. They haven't even speculated on a weight class. They just no say no they no no, no they they have they have. Yeah. This is the thing. So the fight is supposed to be like the co-main event to. An exhibition trilogy of Chavez Sr. and Jorge Arce. Did you know that? No, nah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So it's really like some Roy Jones, Mike Tyson shit going on. What? But listen, Chavez oh, Sr. God. has revealed he did not, he didn't want Junior to fight Cazares. Because he's tough and a complicated fighter. He wanted him to, because guess what? Guess why he didn't want that? Mm -hmm. Did you know Chavez Jr. just got a nose job? What? Man, the boy out here like Michael Jackson. And he fight, and he trying, oh man, this boy tripping, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chavez Sr. wanted a less less risky adversary. Now the debate is whether the fight would take place at 175, which Chavez's camp is requesting. But Cazares says that an agreement had previously been made for 172, so he won't go no higher than 173. Now, that's where the dispute is coming in. What? Bro, it, 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 everything surrounding Chavez Jr., man, just getting weirder and weirder, man. Every year, something, every... It's not, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. He not. But you old. know what? You know that's my guy now. I feel. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's like me he eating the water burger. Mm-hmm. I mean, he eating whatever the fucking uh, In and Out burger, fries. He's smiling, smoking weed. Yeah. Feeling fine. Yeah, that's it's it's crazy late. though, bro. You know. What I, mean? I know. I know. I fucks man. with him, but now Jose Suleiman has said that he will step in and mediate the weight discrepancy and 
everything should be resolved. They're going to either come to 175 or it's going to be 173 because that's, you know what I'm saying, what Cazares' camp has said they would go as high as. So if, if Chavez bends to them, it'll be 173. If they mm-hmm. bend to them, it'll be 175. So we're either going to see a light heavyweight limit fight or a catch weight at 170. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that go. We'll see how that play out. It's going to... It's, it's gonna, it's gonna, something gonna happen. That's what I know. What you think about Pacquiao and McGregor being rumored? Malarkey. Yeah, me too, man. Pure malarkey. Now, I would see, I see the point. I see what McGregor's shooting for, uh, Mega Millions. You know, it mm-hmm. would be, I mean, people would tune in. Say yeah. The UFC crowd would tune in. The diehard Pacquiao fans, the millions and millions of diehard Pacquiao fans. Lord, I know, right? So he can't go wrong, but as far as me as a boxing fan and, and the competitiveness of the fight, I wouldn't be very interested because I yeah. know that McGregor cannot stand up to Manny Pacquiao in a boxing ring. Now, I know, if, man. If they were to put it in an octagon, be different. It'll be a whole lot different. But it's pure malarkey. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I also think, and I also think too, even though Pacquiao is like 40 years old, 41, I think McGregor is playing a dangerous game now. Because you can always say, you know, it was a good marketing scheme seeing that Florida is TBE, the best ever, yada, yada, yada whoop the whoop. And you getting in there. I'm going to try to hurt you. Yeah, you getting in there with somebody, man, that's going to play with you a little bit, That that's not known for throwing that many punches at this stage in his career anyway. Yeah. But you're dealing with somebody like Pacquiao, man, that boy that is coming in there to hurt you. Oh, he going to get you out of there, Chief. Even at the age that he at right now, at the competition. Oh, see, see, Floyd, see, Floyd wasn't fighting. Floyd wasn't fighting the next generation of fighters in terms of right now. I'm talking about the guys that was on the come up with Floyd, when Floyd was getting on his way out of there. Look here, those are the guys that's running the division right now, and those are guys that Flo, I'm um, that Pacquiao is uh, fighting and beating. I'm talking about the Keith Thurmans of the world and Manny everybody Pacquiao. else. Manny Pacquiao will give that boy grade A ass beat. Grade A ass beat. I man. mean, uh, and uh, I know uh, real he gonna drop Fifth Ward B's on that. In the words of the Ghetto Boy. Yep, and, and I know a lot of UFC fighters don't want to hear that shit, man. But let's just be, let's just call a spade a spade, yeah, we, bro. Like, you got to call a spade a spade, bro. Pacquiao ain't Floyd, and Pacquiao is not gonna carry him. Pacquiao Even is gonna though, knock now, his ass now, out. See, this is what we say: styles make fights. Because yes. I don't think you know Pacquiao can't beat Floyd in any day. No, any day. But if you put Pacquiao in the ring with Conor McGregor. You got a real, you got a massive KO on the way. Two world star. Now I don't even think world star popping no more. No, um, no, no, world shit. star would, would wouldn't be it. This gonna be a uh, this would be a sports center top team. Oh yeah, for sure, easy. easy. Number one, easy. No, because one. I, I, because being real, like, Harlow style. Two. Two. Man, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. All right, the MMA news. Uh, we had an event on Saturday, UFC Fight Night, Smith versus Racket. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. Racket got a unanimous decision over Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith basically said that uh he was having some weight problems. You know, he, he don't know if he needs to go back down in weight, go up in weight. He don't know yet. So... His future sounded kind of unsure in the UFC, not just in the weight division, just in the UFC period, because he sounded like he was he 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 kind of sounded like he quit on himself. But and I hate to say that about fighters, but in his post fight interview, it seemed like it. His nice performance didn't necessarily show that, but his uh, but his 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 post interview kind of had me worried a little bit. Um, on the that same happened. card. I know, I know. It 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 does. It does. It, it it just comes with the territory, man. When you when you when you in combat sports, man. You know, sometimes it's your night. Sometimes it ain't. But sometimes hey, it gets the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Yeah. And sometimes, man, you can say that maybe it was just 
the disappointment of the loss talk. So yeah, yeah. No, hey, I give him give him a pass. Yeah, and on that same card, on the co-main event, Robbie Lawler and, and Neil Magny, they got into a. They was in a pretty good fight. Hey, uh, Robbie, but, Robbie Lawler is one of my favorite fighters, man. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. He is too. He, he mine too. Mine too. He lost to Neil Magny in the unanimous decision too. So man, it, it was it was kind of bittersweet, man. To be real, that hurt, man. He he's an OG mm-hmm. in the MMA game, mm-hmm. a real OG. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And he been there for a minute, man. That's what a lot of people forget about, man. You know, they look at his age. They look at the fights he got. But he he really been he been in the UFC a while, bro. He been holding it down, man. He been a, he been he been a source of a lot of excitement. And, and, and I really appreciate him. And I want to say, Robin Lawler, we salute you, brother. For real, though. For real, though. Diego Sanchez. I mean, a lot of y'all probably familiar with him being the uh, Ultimate Fighter winner early on. In the game, he signed a UFC fight deal. I think it consists of four fights. And he said after that, he pretty much done with MMA. So I think I think it's good. I mean, Diego haven't really been what he was in a while, but he's one of those cagey fighters, man, that still pull out a W when he needs to. Uh he 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 one of those fighters that kind of you like to see. In a, he, he always gives you an exciting fight, but at the same time, you know, you kind of know when it's time to hang it up. I mean, he been fighting since UFC season one, man. UFC so, Ultimate so, Fighter so, season so, one. So, so let me ask you this. Is four fights a reach for him? Is he, like, reaching mm-hmm. too far with, yeah. with saying four fights? Yeah, I think with the quality of fighter he is now, I think he is kind of reaching with, with four fights. I don't see him. I don't see him fighting it out. To be real, it, it's, it just depends on the matchmaking at this point. But and also, also to take a line from Dana White, whenever a fighter starts talking about retirement, you probably need to retire. Time for him to get on out of there. Yeah. So it's, it's one of them situations where I don't think he's gonna fight it out. I just think matchmaking is gonna kill him. You know. And the UFC not into the all that. Like no, no, it'll get you out of there. Yeah, they're gonna get you on out of there. Like you like like you said, you put so eloquently in a previous episode. Once you get to a certain level in MMA, you're not fighting down. No, no, you're not fighting down, bro. You know what I'm saying? You either fighting on your level above or right a guy on the come up. Yeah. Not necessarily and it's and you will fight down. You will fight down, all right. You'll fight down in another promotion. You you can't fight down in the UFC. You know, that's when that's when they start releasing you. They get you up out of there because everybody right. knows that the UFC is the pinnacle of MMA talent. Yeah. Not to say that these other guys don't work as hard in other promotions, but the UFC is the top tier, top of the top. You go look at the UFC top 10 in any one of the divisions from male to female. And then you go look at the top 10 in all of these other weight classes and in, in, in these other promotions. Nine times out of 10, the top 10 the top 10 in every one of the divisions in another weight class outside of the UFC is UFC recycled fighters. For one, they not competing. They couldn't, and no, they, those top fighters couldn't compete in the UFC in that top five. So it's like, you already know, man, you're not going down. Once you make it to a certain point, you fighting up in the UFC. And if once you can't compete on that level, you either retire or get out the way. That's heavy, man. That's heavy. Uh, That's hey, real talk. I really like that shit. I think boxing kind of needs to find some kind of way to incorporate that. You yeah, because there's a no. lot of fighters. It's a lot of fighters who don't need to be fighting the champions anymore. Don't need to be up there. You know what I'm saying? Messing with the top guys, but they can still make a living if you're fighting some. You know what I'm saying? Some other guys and guys. You, you, you could have like the gatekeepers, mm. you know what I'm saying? They could come down and compete and get rid of all the trash who don't deserve to make it up to the top. You feel true. me? True, true, and, and you have some competitive and exciting fights too. But yeah. you know, that's that's a conversation for another day, man. Uh, what you got with with, with George St. Pierre, man? Man. 
Uh, he basically said that he can't. He might not be able to make 155 pounds for the Khabib well, fight. We, 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 we already. We knew that though. Yeah, knew we knew that, that already. You know what I'm saying, go ahead. We knew that already. So, I mean, I'm not going to stay on it too long. I mean, he just said he couldn't make 155 pounds just because where he had in his life. I understand that. I mean, a lot has happened. You know, I mean, you start walking around comfortably at 175, 180, some fighters 200. I mean, it's hard to come down and it's hard to get motivated to do it. So I, I don't blame him. And, 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 to be, and now the more I say it out loud and the more I think about it, I don't blame him. Because as we said, he's like the undertaker. He just come back. And but when you're in wrestling, you don't have to worry about the weight limits. Now nah, you don't. So now nah, you don't have to worry about now it. Now you gotta worry about you gotta make weight to come back for this big event. It's it's a lot harder. You gotta have to pick somebody that's your size, man, or above where you used to fight at. So you're gonna have to pick and choose wisely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Dana White, you know, a lot of people were surprised to see him stumping for Trump at the RNC 2020. Oh, wait a minute, man. Yeah. The man was at the Republican National Convention? Yeah, but a lot of people were surprised about that, man, but I wasn't. I mean... I'm surprised. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, did I mean... Oh yeah, but him and but Dana White and Trump, they tight, you know? that's He's been supporting him from day one. You can't knock it. That's one thing I, I was telling some folks, man, they was they was mad, you know, they was upset. Then I had some people, you know, telling me, man, they support him and everything. I mean, I don't swing either side, bro. I'm just saying, like, he uh Oh, I swing the side. Yeah, but I'm talking about in terms of choosing. Oh I know, but but I'm talking but, but about you in know, terms of choosing. I don't like anybody if you choose to support Trump, I mean that's your political exactly. Person. I can't exactly. you know what I'm saying, knock you, but what I'm saying is this. He's on the right side of history or the wrong side of history. This guy's a real life idiot. Like, yeah, he, he puts his foot in his mouth daily. Yeah, he, but here's he the thing: constantly though. spits malarkey. But here's the thing, though, man. Like, you, the, the, I, I'm just, I'm one of those types of people, man. I'm not gonna judge you about who you who you support. It just is unless what it is. unless you, unless you one of those guys. One of those he should have complied, guys. Yeah, that's different. Then I judge you. Yeah, that, that's a different thing. Yeah, that's I a judge whole different. Yeah, that's, that's a whole different conversation I, for a whole different time. I just think, like, you know, that, a lot of people were surprised. Ah, let's get that out of the way. You know, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not trying to turn anybody off, but if you turned off, good. Because yeah, you, you go ahead. You right. you're right. You're right. But yeah, he he was stumping for him. A lot of people were surprised. I wasn't surprised because he'd been supporting him since he announced he was running for president. He had him at some events. He always invited him to the event. So yeah. And then Kobe Covington, you know, he was real critical of LeBron James. He always gets his ass whooped. Uh yeah, he was he was critical he of LeBron. A guy, when he steps up against a guy. Oh, yeah. With a little melanin in him. In yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. That's, that's yeah. be real. You know what I'm saying? You're right, you right, bro. So whatever he says is for pure uh promotion and to keep his name relevant. He's got to at this point, Kobe Covington has <clears throat> no choice but to go all out and stump for Trump. I know at this point. If he I does mean, anything else is disingenuous. You know? Yeah. So hey, fuck him. Fuck whatever he's talking about. But what is he talking about? What did he have to say? He said, he, you know, he, he was mad, but he was aggravated that a lot of the players, a lot of the sports leagues shut down their games or postponed their games or whatnot. And he tweeted out. You know out, what? You know who else was was, was perturbed? Some uh, a boxing guy, Brendan Taylor, I think his name is. Mm. He's kind of big in the boxing world. He does. He goes, he said the NBA are idiots. You know, hmm. hey, so but everybody's showing their hand. Don't get too political, people. So if you want to support Trump, that's fine. That's fine. But if you support black people being shot 
in the back being having their necks kneeled on for seven to eight minutes. If you support black people being run up on in their own homes, when they've done nothing wrong with a no-knock warrant being shot, then I can't really fuck with you. Mm. Now I can't I can't judge you on your political uh stances or your preference, Republican or whatever. Because that changes. That that shifts with the wind. Republicans yeah. it used to be, you know, Republicans abolished slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to go back to it, but that shit changed. And, and then see, that's what people always like to throw in your face. Yeah, the Republicans, you know, you guys support me, Democrat, but Shit, nigga, that was uh, that was hundreds of years ago. Yeah, exactly. But you know, so I'm not gonna knock you for that. But if you see something happening and your political stance is so intrinsic, it's so influential on your life that it makes you take a certain side on a human rights issue. Then you lost me, man. I can't fuck with you. Man, you know I already saying? know. I feel the same way. Yeah. Because even, even the Make America Great leader was once a Democrat. So it's not like, it ain't like they just, you know, all that shit and changed, And he also stated before that if you want to, if you want to uh, run for president and win, you can, all, you can run as a Republican. Yeah, they'll take they'll, anybody. They'll, yeah, they'll believe that shit. They'll go for anything. And he's really doing it. Yeah. But going into what Kobe, Kobe, Kobe Covington said, man, he was like, oh, wow, you postponed your games? Want to prove you really about change? Quit your multi-million dollar jobs and soft privileged lives playing a kid's game. Take a massive pay cut and perform the toughest jobs in America. Become cops. Here's my thing. I'm just going to respond to that real quick. Most of these guys didn't come from the lives they live in now. You understand what I'm saying? Most of the guys they in the be. NBA is made up of people from the gutter. They be. Kobe Covington. It's not. You shouldn't dignify him with a response. I know. But it's sometimes. What? Hey, I think we should move on to Silver versus Hawk. But yeah, let's go ahead. If go you way. feel like. You want to address that guy? Nah, I just feel like I just feel like he, you know, he wasn't the first person to say it as a celebrity. So I just want to just touch on that man. That don't get it twisted that these guys, bro, that make they have a whole bunch of money at their disposal right now, and they're making millions and millions of dollars playing a kids' game, quote unquote. That these guys then spend most of their life in the gutter with every with all of the broke folks that didn't have nothing. So just because they got a few a few dollars for for the last five years don't necessarily excuse the earlier part of their life. So it's obvious they can identify what was really going on. I'm just saying that. I just wanted to get that out there. But yeah. Silver and Hall on a UFC fight night, should be a fight night. That's what they're saying, but we don't know yet. It might be on pay-per-view. Bro, it might be a part a, of the pay-per-view. That's a fight night, I'm tuned in. You know, yeah. even though Anderson Silva's over the hill, he's, he's, he's one of those guys, like, if... If Floyd Jones is fighting, even though he's fucking old, yeah, you know what I'm saying. If 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 uh, who else? Anybody like anybody that I like to watch? Mm -hmm. you no, know, if they fighting, I'm a I'm a support. I went to see Roy Jones one time at the Coast Coliseum past his past his prime, you know, against uh, I think it was Anthony Henshaw or something like that. Mm. But man, I'm gonna I'm I'm watch. I'm gonna be tuned in. I'm gonna watch the undercards. That'll be something good. You know, I, I get to see some of the up and coming fighters. That's gonna be the real treat in that fight. Is the is the is the undercard yeah. important fights? You're gonna get to see some. You know, get some people gonna get some visibility because guy people are gonna tune in to to see Silver, the yeah. Spider. You know what I'm saying? He's a mm -hmm. a legend. I'm so. Well, Speaking you know, of that, do you know what though? 
Mm -hmm. You got Pacquiao talking about fighting McGregor, but Anderson Silva has yet to step over into the boxing arena. He should do his own thing. And Pacquiao should challenge Silva, and that would that would be mega dog. Yeah, I mean, I just it just that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot to go along with it. I think with Silva saying that he wanted to get a fight with McGregor, that would be the closest and more realistic thing that could happen. But I think the UFC oh, blocked no. it see, for a few reasons. I don't want to see Silva against another MMA fighter that I know is prime. And young is gonna you, you already know the outcome. But mm-hmm. even though in the boxing arena you may know that Manny Pacquiao has the advantage, you still got that wild card of mm-hmm. this being the first time Silver's boxed. So mm-hmm. you don't you don't know if his hands are as explosive or more explosive than McGregor's were. Yeah. And Floyd May was a, a master defender. True. So, and Manny Pacquiao is going to open up. So, if Hmm. you get a guy that's opening up, you got another aggressive fighter in another realm of MMA, then you got the potential for a great fight. I think that's more appealing than a Pacquiao McGregor fight. I agree with that. Now that you broke it down like that, that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, So, yeah, I definitely take that. Hey, JB, man, look, once again, it's been a pleasure. You know, you already know it. You already know it, Jack. I appreciate you schooling me once again on the fine nuances of mixed martial arts <laughs> as I am growing into a fan and connoisseur of the sport. And uh, I stimulate boxing conversation because, uh, as you know, Boxing is the greatest sport in the world. Yeah. By far. No matter. No By matter far. what people say. You know, nothing beats a great prize fight. Nothing. And again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Locker Room, T H E L O C K A R O O M, and our Facebook page. The locker room spelled the same way. Dot com. All right, and yeah. the Hurt Business podcast on Apple and Spotify, which we are live every Tuesday and Friday for the people. Rain, sleet, snow, or shine. We here. We, we here. gonna be in that thing, man. Strong. Yeah. So, hey. Once again, we want to thank you all for listening, for those of you who do listen. And we want to thank the new listeners, whoever's the first time. Hey, come on, man. Get to know us. And uh, sooner or later, man, we're going to get this thing live. We're going to be taking calls. And we're going to have fighter interviews. That's coming real soon. So stay tuned, people. Bigger and better things coming for the Herb Business Podcast. Hey, we signing off. It's CP, Chris Parker. JB, you already know, baby. Get up with me. Yeah. Peace.